It's time. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Always appreciate it. It's good to see you. Today we have a super special treat in that as you saw in the intro, we're going to go through a new drone release, and it's actually a new series release of drones from XO Drones in combination with Hubson Drones. Now this is a pretty big deal because not only are we getting a single drone release like you usually see, we're getting a full series of drones, which is two models with a sub-model in each one, so four, count them, four drone releases today. Now this is the first video in a series and in this video I'm going to geek out a little bit and I'm going to give you all the specs and give you an overview of this series of drone that is the XO Blackhawk 2 series of drones. Now this new release of drone is pretty cool because it includes not only a mini but it includes a full size series as well. Now I have flown these drones for the last couple of weeks so that I could give you a real first hand view of these products. But we're not going to go through those flight details and what happened during those flights today. Now that being said, if you're not subscribed, make sure that you do because I'm going to come out with a rapid fire series of videos here that's going to cover all kinds of facets of these drones. So keep an eye out for those, you're not going to want to miss them. To keep this video just a little bit shorter, I'm going to focus mainly on the EXO Mini Pro and the Blackhawk 2 Pro. However, as there are differences in the specs, I'll be sure to point those out. So before I get into the detailed reviews of these drones, a few of you might be saying, what's an EXO? Or who's EXO? Never heard of them before. Well, I have done a few videos of their other products and I'll put those links up here so you can go ahead and check those out when you have a moment. But I've also done an interview with the CEO and founder of EXO Drones, Charlie Cannon. Now, I'll put that video up here as well. Yeah, You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and take a look at that video because he was gracious enough not only uh, to tell us a little bit about EXO, uh, the background, how it came to be and where they plan to go, but he was nice enough to tell us a little about the drone industry and the internal workings of factories and how they work around the world. So you're not going to want to miss that video because as a drone consumer, uh, if you're watching this video, it is fascinating to hear about the industry and some of the inner workings. So uh, make sure you bookmark that and uh, come back to it. So to kick this off, this series of drones is a collaboration between Hubson and EXO Drones. It is a completely new design and a new series. And of course, I mentioned it does come with the mini and the full size versions for the Pro. Now, this happens to be the EXO Mini Pro, uh, but we do have the uh, EXO Mini Standard right back here. And the weight, of course, is below the 249 grams. Or, of course, as the Blackhawk 2 Pro is not, it's about 550 grams, so a little more than uh, twice the weight. So let's just go through the specs on these, and of course we're going to start with the camera. Now, on a camera drone, of course, that's really important that we do have a good camera sensor, and they didn't uh, shortchange us at all in this series. In the Pro series, not only, of course, do we have a 4K 30 video, the sensor itself is a 48 megapixel sensor but they opened the aperture to 1.85, which is fantastic, which is going to give us a better low light sensitivity, give us some HDR capabilities. It's gonna give us some huge dynamic range, which of course they also added a log mode. So that's gonna give us a better dynamic range uh, for our color profile. And the Pro models come with a one over 1.3 sensor and the standard models come with a one over 2.6 sensor. And it has up to a 6X zoom. And of course they all come with full three axis gimbals. And they did include an awesome battery in these as well. They're claiming a 35 and 40 minute battery life. But in the mini standard, 
they actually claim a 45 minute battery life. They do also include in the box smart chargers for these, and I have tried them, and they're pretty cool. They go around and charge each one to make sure that they're good, including the remote as well. Now, one of the more advanced features on these Pro models is it does have three directional obstacle avoidance. Yes, it has forward obstacle avoidance, rear, and downward facing. Not only does it have the obstacle avoidance, it has the software and the firmware to go along with it. So, of course, it has a forward path technology, which means if you're coming up to an object, not only will it sense it and has the ability to notify you, you can set it to where it can stop and uh, not run into an object in front of you, or you can set it to try to navigate around it. So if you're pushing full forward on the stick or you're doing some follow-away mode and it does happen to come up near an obstacle, it will actually fly around and navigate around and continue forward. So it has this pass forward technology, which is pretty awesome. Again, I am going to be doing a video testing just that uh, in a future one. So again, make sure you watch for those because I'll do a further review on that in detail. Now, it is worth noting that on this series, when you are in the standard, the XO Mini standard or the Blackhawk 2 standard, not the Pro models, they do not have three axis optical avoidance. They only have downward sensors. So, of course, that's one of the ways they're going to take these models and drop the price down. If that's something that's not needed for you, you can get a model with a little less technology in it. It'll just cost you less money. Now, they do have some pretty awesome modes included as well. One of them that takes advantage of the obstacle avoidance that I had mentioned was they do have an active track type follow mode where you can choose a subject and it will completely track you and keep you in the center of the screen. And it has additional versions of that where you can follow directly behind you or you can fly from the side or you can do an orbit while you're doing the active track and it keeps you in the center as it orbits and if you're moving it will continue to move along with you but orbit you at the same time so a pretty cool cinematic look in addition of course it comes with the standard modes like you'd expect like a regular orbit or regular follow mode things like that and it does have some pretty interesting additional smart modes that they call a creative mode like a helix and droney things like that so pretty interesting modes that these can do as well and it does have hyperlapse mode as well and there's multiple versions of that. You can fly straight, sideways, you can guide it, things like that. So it's pretty full featured for a hyperlapse. And each model does come with a remote and they all use the same remote and they are really nice. They're very substantial. You can feel that there's just some weight to it, some heft. Feels a really quality build. Does have a place where you can put your device here and it does connect to your device via a cable that comes out the side here which is a micro USB connection here, which is a little surprising. I wish they would have upgraded that to a USB-C. And one thing they've done is they created a new transmission protocol, which gives us a five mile range on all of the models here, except for the mini standard. And that one is 3.75 miles, so no slouch either. And of course we can't fly that far uh, due to the visual line of sight here in the United States. But in those areas that does have a lot of interference, give a normal transmission some difficulty, shouldn't have any problem whatsoever with a solid FPV signal uh, for quite a ways. Now it is interesting in that the cable that goes from the micro USB to your phone, they do include cables uh, that have the different ends on them for a USB-C, a micro, and the lightning connector for an Apple. And one thing that I did, I had a video years ago uh, with the original Mavic, where I replaced that cable and came out of the bottom of the remote. Now, the interesting thing with this one is that there is a hole uh, that looks like it could be for a future USB-A, uh, but right now, alas, it is empty. So hopefully in the future, they do put a USB-A connector in here that allows you to connect your phone. And the reason that I would like that is because when the wire comes out and connects to your phone and your phone is in, of course, the end of the wire is kind of in your hand, which is a little bit awkward. So it would be really nice if at least one of those wires was buried in the drone and uh, you wouldn't have to worry about that while your hand was sitting on it. Also on the remote, there is a scroll wheel for the gimbal so you can move the gimbal up and down. And it is very sensitive to where if you move the gimbal a little bit, it will move very slow so you can get a very cinematic move, which that's missing on a lot of the budget end drones. It's usually very fast up and down or clicks up and down. Uh, but this one is fantastic. You can just barely inch it down as you're making those moves, or you can move very fast. Which brings me to the other button here, which is a function button, which is assignable to a few of the functions. By default, it will re-level your gimbal, which is really nice. If you're making some moves, you click that and immediately you will be pointed directly forward. So let's talk about the drone bodies a little bit and some of those specs. 
Of course, we'll start with the Mini Pro here, which has a wind resistance of a level five, which is pretty good. And that's pretty typical uh, for a drone of this size. And of course it is limited because of the size. It does get pushed around, of course. Now the Blackhawk 2 model, I have found to be a tank in the wind. It is just stable as a rock. Of course, it has a little more weight, which gives it that functionality. And the motors are more powerful, so it can keep itself in place and keep stable video. And it has a wind resistance of a level eight, which is up to 36 miles per hour. Now I didn't fly it in a 36 mile an hour wind, but I did fly it in about a 15 mile an hour wind and it never even flinched. I did all kinds of functions like the droney, the helix, the hyperlapse while it was windy and you couldn't tell at all, it was solid as a rock. Now also on these, there is internal storage. So you don't have to worry about an SD card. And I wasn't sure if I liked that at first, I usually like having my card. I know I have it in my hand. I can change it out if it gets full. But on the Blackhawk 2 Pro, it has both. It has not only internal storage, but it has an SD card slot as well. So you can use the internal storage or an SD card if you like that. Now, both the Pro models do have a takeoff altitude of 12,500 feet. Now, also with these models, you can fly above 400 feet. Now, if you're a recreational pilot, you cannot go above 400 feet AGL. But as a 107 pilot, that was very frustrating with some of the lower budget type drones where it would hit about 395 feet and it would stop. Now, as a 107 pilot, there are times under certain circumstances, you can fly above 400 feet AGL and these will allow you to do it. So that just shows you uh, the professional level of this drone. There's three speeds to this drone as well. There is a normal mode, a film mode and a sport mode. And in the sport mode, it can do about 35 miles an hour plus. And indeed, when I was trying it out, depending upon the wind direction, I got up to 38 miles an hour. So it's really zippy. Now, another thing they did really well is the GPS is a quality GPS. Now, when I did connect, it did take a little bit longer than I thought to connect, but I did get sometimes 16, 17, 18 satellites. And once it was locked in, I never had one problem and I'll show some video here to where they just stayed solid as a rock in position and a very, very precision GPS. Now, something that I haven't confirmed, but I suspect right now is that there's not geofencing built into these. Now, and the only reason I say I suspect is because I did go in one of the areas where I typically fly. And many times with the DJI models, it will pop up and say that I am close to a geofenced area that I have to be careful. And I'm usually right next to it. I know I'm not in it. Now, I didn't get any warning like that popping up. So either I wasn't quite as close or maybe the geofencing was a little bit different and that it wasn't close enough to mortify me yet or it doesn't exist, I am not sure. I will update that more when I do some flights. But for right now, fingers crossed, there's no geofencing to get in our way. Another thing that is a professional level in these that they are all updated via firmware. And because I'd received these before they were actually released, there has been multiple firmware updates already. You turn it on, the remote pops up and tells you that there's a firmware update available for either the remote or the drone itself. And it will go ahead and tell you what to connect or disconnect. And of course, if you get one of these drones and you have an issue, make sure you report it because it's likely because EXO is a build on being a very support centric company that they should respond and take care of those problems right in firmware so you don't have to wait or buy a new one. The firmware can be shoved right to it and take care of a problem. One thing I did want to mention also is the app itself is very clean, very easy to navigate. I had no problems whatsoever and I do have an Android. Unlike, unfortunately, uh, with some of the DJI models that I've used just recently, boy, I really struggle with the Android and I know some of you have in the comments. So with the Android phone, uh, with this app from uh, the Blackhawk app, it has really worked well. I have not had one glitch. I have not had it lock up on me or do anything. Uh, so it's very clean and very easy to navigate. So of course, what everybody's thinking right now is, okay, yeah, but what are these costing, right? They're gonna start at $1,000 and go up from there. Well, EXO has done a really good job, I think, at hitting this market really well. So the EXO Mini Standard is $499. The EXO Mini Pro is $650. The Blackhawk 2 is also $650. And the Blackhawk 2 Pro starts at $799. Now, I don't have all the different options of the pricing right now. Uh, they should be available on the website soon. But of course, starting at $499 for your mini model, going for $799 for your top of the line pro model is really good for what you're getting here. This is some really nice technology. 
And as I mentioned before, of course, there's gonna be multiple videos on these drones uh, showing the flights themselves going through. I'm gonna test them in different conditions. I'm gonna go through all the different versions and what's in the box, all those types of things. So make sure you keep an eye out for those because you're not gonna to wanna to miss those. And of course, if you found any value in this video so far, don't forget to hit that like button. Let's us creators and myself know, hey, we're doing something that's of value. So I really do appreciate it. And of course, I realize I am geeking out a little bit, trying to rapid fire a lot of specs and information at you because as a drone consumer, this is incredibly exciting. These are some fantastic models. And I have to say, the Blackhawk 2 Pro is quickly becoming my favorite drone. It is becoming my go-to drone wherever I go. It is compact, it works, it flies like a tank. I have to say it has really impressed me so far. If I did miss something, which is possible, or if there's more information that you want to know on a particular item or something, of course, make sure you put it in the comments and let me know, because not only will I try to answer it if I can, but if it's something that I think is useful, I will certainly make sure I test it or talk about it in the next video. So again, there's so much more that I'm going to be going through. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you guys. But until next time and next video, yippee ki -yay.